What's up everybody, Kinetic here, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. I've been getting a lot of requests from people asking me to talk more in depth about crafting. I've also been getting a lot of repeating questions asking, uh, where did I get that armor? Where did I get that weapon that is on this character in this video? And where do I get this schematic? Where do I get these materials and things like that? I'm going to try and answer all those questions here in this video. I'm going to try to keep it as short and concise as I can. But um, I have a, it's sometimes a tendency to go on a ramble so uh just a little warning that uh, there may be some rambling in this video but if you're looking for answers to those types of questions you'll probably find it here in this video i can give you some really easy answers some quick answers i think to uh some of those questions regarding where to get x thing for example weapons armor materials and schematics there's basically two ways that you're going to get things here in dragon age inquisition you're either going to get it from uh, picking it up, be it from a corpse, a carcass, treasure chest, or something like that, or if it's a material from gathering it, right? For example, from uh, an iron ore node, or you know, you're going to find an elf root plant. That's one way, and basically finding it. And when it comes to finding things, aside from uh, the plants and animals, it's pretty much all random. When you're looting a corpse, when you're looking inside a treasure chest, in almost all cases, according to Bioware, it's completely random. So you could get a, a regular blue weapon, maybe you could get uh, a really awesome purple unique weapon or armor piece. You might get schematics, or you just may get complete junk. Uh, you may only get like uh, a handful of gold or something like that from looting a corpse. It's just, it's completely RNG. So if you're <laughs> if you're looking for specific weapons that you see me wearing, chances are I probably just picked it up a of somebody's corpse or found it in a treasure chest and it was completely luck. You can also though, however, find weapons, armor, schematics, and even crafting materials from merchants all over Dragon Age Inquisition. So if uh, if you're not looking for anything too special, um, including for crafting materials, if you're just looking for some real simple crafting materials, like a, a type of cloth or something like that, check with the merchants. Chances are they may have what you're looking for. Now I do make guides about uh, farming crafting materials and that's largely because you can only, I believe, you can only find the fade touched versions of crafting materials by looting them as far as I understand it. Uh, for example, if you're looking for fade touched iron, which is a, basically a really rare high quality version of an iron ore, uh, you will probably only get that, I believe, in, in almost all cases from actually going out there and gathering iron. Same thing with uh, fade touched cloth and, and things like that. It's all from you actually being out there and gathering it from someplace. You can't buy this, as I understand it, from a merchant or get it from the, uh, the resource gathering missions from the war room. All right, so let's talk about crafting from schematics. If I go over here to the craft armor table here, it will list all the different schematics that I have for armor, and they're divided up uh, based on the type of armor. Of course, depending on the class that you're playing or what type of uh, class the companions are that you're bringing along with the party uh, will depend on the type of armor that they can wear, of course. Now, for the different characters also, they will have uh, a different unique style in the way that that armor looks on them. So what you see, for example, on Cassandra is the same armor, but it looks completely different on a different character. If we take a look at Blackwall, same exact schematic. Come on, load. There it is. And it looks completely different on him than it does for, uh, for me or for Cassandra. Some people are also asking about how they get certain like arm accessories or leg accessories for their armor pieces. That actually comes from the arm and the coat pieces. By crafting, for example, the Vanguard mail arms, that's actually how we get that sweet looking kind of uh, shoulder guard thing that Blockwall has here. Same for the coat legs. This will add on to uh, an armored look for the armor piece that you will put it on. These arm and leg armor pieces are actually upgrades that will go on to a base armor piece. And that only applies, of course, also to armor pieces that have slots for arms and legs. You can actually see it uh, whether your armor piece has slots or not simply by going to your inventory, for example. 
uh, go to armor, of course. <laughs> and uh, we can see from the armor piece that I'm wearing, there are two slots there on the right, superior vanguard male arms and superior vanguard male legs. And so it's giving me, as you can see on the character, these really cool looking arm guards and the, uh, the boots that my main character is wearing. Let's take a look at the weapon crafting station and I can go into more detail about schematics. So for example, here we've got a, a tier three bow schematic. There are three tiers of weapons and armor that you could find in Dragon Age Inquisition. And depending on the tier will depend on how many slots you can apply crafting materials to. So you can see here this tier three bow schematic has not including the top slot, which is a masterwork slot. I'll talk about that in a second. There are four slots below that. For tier two, there are three. And if we go down to a tier one, even this upgrade, there's only two slots available for putting crafting components into. Things like grips or halves for melee weapons or pommels, these are basically the equivalent of those arm and leg pieces for armor. These are upgrades that you will put onto a weapon if it has slots available. If we take a look, for example, at one of my two-hand cleavers, on the right you can see there are three slots there. We've got a slot for a haft, a pommel, and also for a rune. A rune is basically uh, a, a special type of often elemental uh, upgrade that you can add on to a weapon to give it an additional effect. For example, fire damage, lightning, or ice, for example. Let's take a look at some schematics and kind of break down what exactly we're looking at here. For this tier 3 great axe schematic, we've got these four slots here and we've got a masterwork slot up here at the top. Now, masterwork is for where you will put, for example, fade touched versions of crafting materials, really high quality, really rare versions of these crafting materials. And I believe that you can only get these, well, not always only, but in probably 99% of the cases where you're trying to get these materials, you will only find them from actually going out and farming for them. For example, Fade Touched Hollow Leather. You may, for example, in some rare cases, uh, extremely rare, uh, find this maybe from a treasure chest or something like that. But your best chance of actually getting this material would be to go out there, kill a bunch of Hala, and hope that the elves don't kill you in the process. No, um, but yeah, that's why I put together those farming material videos because you can buy, for example, um, a lot of different materials from merchants, but I believe that your best chance, almost your only chance to get a lot of these fade touched materials is from going out there and farming for them. The bonus, as you probably already have noticed on the right hand side, is that these add extra abilities to whatever, for example, weapon you are crafting. If I put, for example, uh, Fade Touched Ring Velvet, then I get a 10% chance to use the ability Hidden Blades on hit with four added hits. Or for another example, Fade Touched Obsidian ability on hit, gain three guard. Really, really nice, especially for melee characters, I think. Masterwork materials are completely optional. You can skip out if you want to uh, using anything at all and just focus on putting materials here in these slots for your schematic. Now you'll notice that um, the, the background image for these slots represents the, the type of material that we're putting there. So you can see there's kind of like almost a rocky looking surface there. That's a metal. Over here you can clearly see what looks like a cloth type of background. That's a cloth, <laughs> right? And the same thing would be for uh, other things. For example, here's another schematic. That looks like some type of skin or whatever. That's leather. It's just a little touch that they added so that way you could more easily identify what type of material you're putting there. Of course, it's just is easy to tell if you click on this slot as well but i'm just saying also <laughs> something to note is that uh, each of these slots will perform a, a different type of function in the way that it will add a different benefit uh, based on what type of not material slot but what kind of uh, i guess i could say utility that it will add to the piece of armor or piece of weapon with this slot. So for example, we've got this slot here, which is basically your, your base slot. And this is going to determine 
base damage that this will have. Now, I want you to note something really, really important here. Take a look up again there at the DPS. It says 215 to 273, but you might have noticed if you have keen eyes, I've actually got the ability to make a 289 DPS weapon. Is this a glitch? No, it's just a really uh, rare material. You can see down there in the lower left, it says tier four rare material. And so this will actually allow me to create something even above and beyond what the normal restrictions of the, the base DPS range that this weapon should have. Down actually below that you can see what I was talking about, how depending on the type of slot, primary, utility, offense, or defense, it will treat this material with a different type of uh, bonus to it. So if it's a primary slot, I'll get a very high armor rating, which is what this is. This is a primary uh, primary slot for this weapon. If it was a utility slot, then you would see that it would give me something like plus constitution or plus strength or something like that. And that's what you will see actually from these other slots here. You can see the two cross swords there. So instead of adding more base DPS, what it's doing is it's adding a different type of attribute. And in this case, what we're looking at is an offensive slot that will add a plus 1% chance to stagger target for each piece of metal that I'm putting into this slot. This slot requires eight pieces of metal. So there you go, math is great, 8% stagger on hit. And of course, depending on the type of metal that you put in here, will give you uh, a wide range of different effects. You make it stagger on hit, uh, a, a bonus to attack, a bonus to guard damage and stuff like that. There is a lot of different possibilities here. Over on the right, let's take a look at the cloth. This is a utility slot, so it will give me, for example, plus one willpower or plus one magic. And again, depending on the, the quality of the material, will depend on how much it gives me of those attributes. Down here, we have another offensive slot. So I could get even more stagger on hit, bleed on hit, armor penetration, and things like that. Today what I would like to do is make some new daggers for our boy Cole, who is about to try a new version of an assassin build that I'm putting together. Now if we look here at the different schematics, I've got some tier 2 and up here at the top is tier 3. You can almost always depend on whatever the top schematic is, almost <laughs> always, depend on that to be the most powerful uh, weapon schematic, but not always. If we go to, for example, over here on the single hand weapons that, uh, for example, Blackwall or Cassandra can use if they're doing like a sword and shield or, or whatever build. Um, I can actually find some cases here where the the highest peak of DPS range isn't necessarily the top schematic. You can see this masterwork inscribed axe actually has a higher potential of DPS than the schematic above it, which is 163. Just a little note there, something uh, to keep in mind. But in this case, I'm pretty confident, yep, that this top one, the split blade dagger schematic that I have, this tier three, is the best that I can do right now for Cole. Again, it has four crafting material slots, not including the masterwork. We can see we've got three metal slots, two offense. This top one is our base damage. Actually, there's another uh, offensive slot, and this one is going to require leather. Let's start here from the the primary slot. And I'm going to look for something that, what do we got here? It says a range of 236 to 301. So I'm going to try and get as close to 301 as I possibly can. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use my Dragon Bone. Surely we can get uh, 301 out of something else here. And, and I'm looking for something that I have a ton of. And it just so happens that I have a ton of Stormheart after that Arbor Wilds story mission. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use that. Let's go over to the left offense slot. And what can we get? We can get bleed on hit, armor penetration, attack, stagger on hit. I think what I would like to get for... Coal is armor penetration. So let's see. I saw it up near the top. 
I don't have very many options, do I? I've got Drake Stone and Bloodstone. Eight or six. This is only going to require three pieces of metal, and I know I can get some more Bloodstone easily, so I'm not afraid to use this for that slot. And I'll be able to do this twice for both daggers, right? Again, here is armor penetration, so I can go from 8% armor penetration and add more bloodstone for more armor penetration, or if I want, I could do something like maybe plus 6 to attack or something like that, but I'm going to go ahead and stack more armor penetration, because why not? Down below, we've got our leather slot here, another offense, but this is going to do something very different because it's leather. What I would definitely like to see for Cole here, because he has a really pathetic amount of critical hit chance. That's what I would like to add for him. What do we got here? Great bear hide. This will give me 6% critical chance from that. It takes three, and I've only got three, unfortunately. All right, so I've got some leather here that will give me plus 5% uh, critical hit chance. I'm going to go with that. And... I'm pretty sure I've got some sweet fade material here that is going to add a nice ability onto these daggers. I think I'm going to go ahead for this dagger and I'm going to use the Fade Touched Ring Velvet, which will give me 10% chance to use Hidden Blades on hit. This doesn't sound like a lot, 10% chance, but as quick as Cole attacks, 10% is going to come pretty damn fast. I mean, I have a 10% chance to do uh, some kind of Warhorn ability or whatever on my uh, my Warrior's two-hand axe, and he does that horn often. I'm just every, All the time I hear him like, burn, I'm like, somebody ate burritos today, didn't they? All right, so there we go. We've got all our materials put into all of the slots. We'll press Y, for example, on controller. And bam, there we go. I have a precise dirk. Let's take a closer look at this precise dirk, especially as we equip it, equip it onto our boy Cole. Where are you at, Cole? This is going to be a, a nice upgrade for him. Currently, he's using some really crappy uh, daggers right now. Level 15, he's level 17, and that's what he's got there. Here's a level 12. This is all too typical of my characters. They're, they're using some garbage level 12 uh, piece of equipment. In this case, it's not so much garbage. It's actually a unique uh, dagger, so it's actually served him well for quite a while. But uh, he's definitely due for an upgrade, and this is going to be definitely a nice upgrade for him. There we go. So now you can see this is the weapon that he has, and we have an empty grip and an empty rune slot. Okay, so I've got my second Dirk crafted, and now let's actually take a look before I I get too carried away here. I'm going to check my modify, not armor, check my modify weapons station. There we go. Go over to the daggers. We've got uh, here already listed that recently created Dirk, and I've already got a precise enhanced grip that I can put there. This also has a rune slot. Okay, now this is something that I, I meant to get into, kind of forgot until this point. Runes are special effects that also, just like other upgrades, you can put on to your weapons, but they do something very unique. Uh, they often add a very cool effect, for one, if you look at this. Now this dagger just looks absolutely awesome, but uh, they also have really cool extra benefits besides that. For example, the Corrupting Rune will add plus 32 damage versus living opponents. So anything that's not an undead, you know, like a zombie or whatever, is going to take more damage because of this rune. We also have other runes, for example, a Dragon Slaying Rune uh, versus Dragons. And you can, these are craftable, by the way. Whoops, let me make sure that we get that in there. Okay, cool. So now I've got my precise Dirk, and it's got a precise enhanced grip, which is giving it an extra 11% critical hit chance. Not bad. I'm actually wondering if we can do something better than that, besides 11% uh, crit hit chance. When it comes to runes, you can actually find these uh, as loot, sometimes very rarely it seems, uh, or you can actually craft them, which is really nice. You'll 
be able to find if you use the uh, the veil fire in uh, certain dungeons and then uh, kind of explore the walls you'll often find it's I guess you could kind of look at it as like a, uh, a secret um, image that only the veil fire will uh, will allow you to discover and by uh, examining it then you're basically getting a rune schematic uh, the ability therefore to craft the rune it takes more than, of course, simply the schematic. These also require other materials. So, for example, the Frost Rune requires a Frost Essence. I believe all of these runes require you to have a blank runestone, and these can actually be bought from merchants. Uh, very common to find these. You shouldn't have too much problem finding them around uh, Dragon Age. All right, let's go back to the dagger section, and I'm going to craft myself a Masterwork Dagger Grip. This is going to cost me some leather, but oh man, I would love to get some more critical hit chance if I can. It looks like I'm going to have to go bear farming. Yeah, I can get 8% crit from bear hides. I can only get 5% from druffalo hide. I know exactly where to find bears, so I think we're going to hold back for now uh, from crafting these grips. Let a, what else would I need, possibly? Pretty much it looks like I need bear hide. <laughs> to, get, uh, to get some really nice critical hit chance grips, uh, I need to go bear farming. Go to daggers, and there is one of the daggers that I created. Only one because currently I'm looking at Draven, my main character's equipment. I have to flip through the characters here, find Cole. And there is the one that I equipped on him. That's why it's not listed there. All right, so we've got the precise Dirk there, which currently has no grip because I haven't made another grip. Over here, we've got a precise enhanced grip, which I already had made. And let's go ahead and we will add our corrupting rune. Now, here's the thing about runes. When you place a rune into a rune slot, it cannot be removed. The only way to uh, to get rid of the effect of the rune on the weapon is to actually overwrite it with another rune. So for example, let's say I have a master corrupting rune on this dagger, but I, then I decide I want to have a dragon slaying rune. Well, then I can actually go ahead and put that still into that slot and what it will do is it will erase the corrupting rune. You will completely lose it, uh, but that is a way that you can change the rune that is on a weapon. For this, I'm just going to go ahead and throw on this corrupting rune. Confirm changes. It says enchanting an item will consume the rune. Do you want to continue? Yes. You can see with the enhancements of the precise enhanced grip and the corrupting rune, this dagger is far superior now to the very same dagger that doesn't have upgrades. That's the power of adding, for example, grips, halves, and runes onto your weapons. I think that's about all I can ramble about here in this video for crafting in Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm sure that there's something that I forgot or perhaps just some additional questions that you might have about the things discussed here in this video. Feel free, of course, to leave those questions down in the comment section of this video and either I myself will get to your question or hopefully other people watching this video will also have uh, a good answer for you. It would be great if we could have like a, a discussion here and, and list a bunch of questions and answers and uh, and just help each other out click the like button to support these dragon age inquisition videos and i'll keep them coming out as quick as i can stay subscribed more is on the way thanks again for watching my name is kinetic and i'll see you next time